Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about the basics of semiconductors. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. So before learning about semiconductors, so we are going to learn about classification of materials. So how materials are going to be classified. So based on the conductivity of the materials, based on the conductivity of the materials, they are classified into three types. One is one classification is conductors. Second classification is insulators. And the third classification is semiconductors. So in conductors, so what are the properties of conductors is conductors have no energy band gap. So conductors does not have energy band gap that is conduction band and valence band overlap with each other. So conduction band and valence band overlap with each other. So always there will be a maximum number of electrons maximum number of electrons which are available in the case of conductors. So insulators have the band gap which is very more in the order of 10 electron volt. So in insulators conduction band is empty. So no electron, no free electron will be available in the case of insulators and hence the conductivity is going to be zero. So conductivity is equal to zero in the case of insulators. So examples of insulators are plastic, diamond and wood. Similarly examples of insulators are all metals. All metals are very good conductors of electricity. So they come under the classification of conductors. So in semiconductors the conductivity lies between lies between conductors and insulators. So conductivity lies between these two values. So that type of uh, materials is called as semiconductors. Uh, all, for example, all the fourth group elements or fourth group elements or semiconductors. So most widely used uh, semiconductors are silicon and germanium. So next is about semiconductors. So semiconductors are basically fourth group elements. So fourth group elements or semiconductors and basically semiconductors are classified into two types. One is intrinsic or pure semiconductors and the second classification is extrinsic or impure semiconductors. So first of all we will discuss about intrinsic semiconductors or pure semiconductors. Next we will discuss about semiconductors. So generally the fourth group elements are considered as semiconductors and most widely used semiconductors are silicon and germanium. The atomic number of silicon is 14 and the atomic number of germanium is 32. The electronic configuration of silicon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. Similarly, the atomic configuration of germanium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2 and 4p2. So these four electrons are called as valence electrons. So since the number of valence electrons are four, these are considered as fourth group elements. So all the semiconductors will have four valence electrons in its outermost shell. So since it has four electrons in its outermost shell, 
and it requires eight electrons for getting stability so they will share the electrons all the semiconductors will share the electrons that is valence electrons are being shared by two adjacent atoms of semiconductor so such type of bond where sharing of electron takes place is called as covalent bond so these covalent bonds are very weaker bonds so these covalent bonds are very weaker bonds and can be easily broken when an external force is applied on a semiconductor so when an external force is applied on a semiconductor all the valence band all the valence band electrons will all val val all the valence electrons sorry so all the valence electrons will become free and they are ready for current conduction the next is the crystal structure so this this diagram represents the crystal structure of a semiconductor and this diagram represents the energy band diagram of the intrinsic semiconductor so these four electrons represents the four valence electrons of a general intrinsic semiconductor so as we know all the electrons in the atom does not participate in current conduction because they are bounded to the nucleus so as the distance from the nucleus increases as the distance from the nucleus increases then the force of attraction force of attraction of the nucleus force of attraction of the nucleus on the electrons decreases so valential electron can become free very easily so when an external force is applied when an external force is applied on this semiconductor then the valence electrons which are lightly bonded to the nucleus will acquire some energy so they will come out of this bonding so they becomes now the free electron so they will come out of the bonding and they will become free because the covalent bonds or weaker bonds since sharing of electrons are involved in this bonding so the valence electrons can become free very easily and and are ready for current conduction so this phenomenon which is which can be seen in the crystal structure can all be can also be explained using energy band diagram so an electron which is initially in the valence band so an electron in the valence band is of type bound so an electron in the valence band is of type bound and does not support current conduction so an electron in conduction band is of type free and they will support the current conduction so when an external force is applied on a semiconductor the electron which is actually involved in bonding so which is called as valence band so valence electron which is involved in bonding will acquire some amount of energy so the amount of energy which we are providing here the external energy which we are providing here so that energy should be always greater than the eg energy band gap so energy band gap of the semiconductor so if the energy which we are providing is greater than is energy then the electron which is actually bound in valence band will now become free and jumps to conduction band and it is ready for current conduction so an electron in conduction band which is free is ready for current conduction under the application of external voltage so when you apply an external field here to the semiconductor then all the electrons will move in a particular direction all the electrons will move in a particular direction so they will cause current conduction so the non existence the non existence of non existence of electron in covalent band is called as hole so non existence of electron in covalent bond is called as hole so this type of material is called as hole so electro so hole so hole or positively charged particles whose so holes are 
positively charged particles electrons are negatively charged particles so the electron the motion of the holes is in the opposite direction of electrons so electron holes will move in opposite direction but the current so uh, uh, the electron motion will be towards the positive terminal and the motion of holes is towards the negative terminal but the current given by them will be in the same direction so even though the motion of electron and holes are in opposite direction the current given by them will be in the same direction the number of holes that can be formed is equal to the number of free electrons which are generated so the number of holes which are formed is equal to the number of free electrons which are generated so this process where new free electron and hole are going to be generated is called as ehp electron hole pair ehp generation so this process is called as ehp generation so the total number of electrons free electrons is equal to the total number of holes in the case of intrinsic semiconductor so in the case of intrinsic semiconductor so in the case of intrinsic semiconductor so total number of holes total number of holes is equal to total number of free electrons so free electrons is important so is equal to total number of electrons is a wrong statement so total number of holes is equal to total number of free electrons available so thus in the case of intrinsic semiconductor n is equal to p where n represents the number of electrons and p represents the number of holes so the current the total current given by them is equal to the sum of electron current and hole current so but even though the total number of electrons is equal to the total number of holes the current given by electrons is greater than the current given by holes so this is because mobility mobility of electrons will be greater than the mobility of holes so we'll i will explain you about the mobility in the upcoming classes so in the intrinsic semiconductor the total current is due to both electrons and holes so the current which is generated by this process that is electron hole pair generation and applying the voltage and then all the electrons will move in certain direction which causes current conduction so this conductivity that means the amount of current generated using intrinsic semiconductor is very very less to increase the conductivity of this semiconductor the only solution is to increase the temperature so temperature has to be increased in order to increase the conductivity of the intrinsic semiconductor so this solution where you are going to increase the temperature in order to increase the conductivity is not acceptable because as temperature increases all the intrinsic semiconductor will become resistors so all the the property of the semiconductor property will vanish will be vanished in the semiconductors and they will act as resistors so this solution is not acceptable and hence we are going for extrinsic semiconductors so this is why we are going for extrinsic semiconductors